Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Kraft Cheese Company will also bring you the Kraft Music Hall every Thursday night. Present each week at this time, Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve, written by John Whedon and Sam Moore. We'll hear from the Great Gildersleeve in just a moment. You know, I can remember back in my boyhood days how we kids used to gather near the kitchen of a late afternoon, drinking in the heavenly smell of fresh-baked bread and rolls. And, of course, the boys and girls of today are no different. When baking time's at hand, you'll find them gravitating to the kitchen with the same hungry, eager look of anticipation on their faces. And how our youngsters love to devour fresh bread and rolls, especially with an appetizing spread like parquet margarine to make all our baking treats so temptingly delicious. Parquet, you see, is far different from old-time margarines. Parquet margarine has a delicate flavor. Yes, it's a margarine that really tastes good. A splendid energy food, too, made from highest quality ingredients. And unlike margarines of even a few years back, parquet is fortified with vitamin A, 9,000 units of this important vitamin to each pound. So if you haven't tried margarine lately, discover parquet's delicious flavor and nourishing goodness by asking your food dealer tomorrow for parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Let's see what's happening to the great Gildersleeve. Now, last week, you remember, our overstuffed hero found himself exchanging tender salutes with Miss Eve Goodwin, on whom he had merely intended to pay a friendly call. We find him now about 12 hours later behaving as any man does when he has a new girl. In short, he's singing in the bathtub. Don't throw bouquets at me. Don't please my folks too much. Don't laugh at my jokes too much. People will say we're in love. Well, let them say it. What do I care? <laughs> Don't. What is it? It's me, Uncle. Can I ask you something? I'll be out in just a second, my boy. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> Darn soap. <laughs> No wonder people are always getting killed in the bathtub. Oh, stop her. Hey, Aunt, hurry up. Yeah, just as soon as I dry myself. Don't laugh at my jokes too much. Yeah, wonder if I'm gaining any weight. Gee, these bathroom scales are no good. How do they expect you to see the numbers? <laughs> Putting on my pants. Well, for Pete's sake. Oh, Sam, would you mind... One side, I... Leroy. Let me look in that mirror for a minute. Uh, tension. <laughs> By George, nobody can call me a fat man. No, sir. I'll relax. <laughs> well, you can't get my goat this morning, my boy. What is it you wanted to ask me? Oh, well, I've organized this football team, see? And I'm the quarterback, and we're going to play Piggy's team. Fine. Go right ahead and play, Leroy. There's just one catch, Unc. We need a football. Oh. Well, Christmas is coming. Yeah, but by Christmas, the season is over. That's true. Well, I'll have to think about it. Who's that? Breakfast is ready, Uncle Moore. Pancake. Oh, I'll be right down, my dear. You go on, Leroy. I'll be down in two minutes. Okay. You'll be thinking about the football. I got something better than that to think about. La -dee -da -dee -da. Oh, I better phone her before she leaves for school. Oh, darn it, she must have left already. Well, I'll send her a note. Uncle Mort! Coming! By George, it's a beautiful day. Day like this, a man feels good enough to lick his weight in wildcats. Hi. Uncle Moore. Well, good morning, my dear. You're looking radiant this morning. <laughs> you seem to be feeling radiant. What happened to you last night? Oh, nothing. <laughs> the reason she's so full of beans is her boyfriend finally called her last night. Well, that's fine, my dear. It's love that makes the world go round. Guys, you are feeling good. Good morning, Mr. Gilsey. Good morning, Bertie. Thou treasure finer than spun gold. Yes, sir. Uh, you want orange juice or tomato? Hmm. <laughs> Uh, 
To squeeze or not to squeeze, that is the question. Whether it is nobler to squeeze an orange or open a can of tomato juice, odds uh, butkins. Maybe I better bring him food. <laughs> What's ever easiest, Bertie? Yes, sir. Hey, Bertie, any more of those pancakes? In just a minute, Leroy. Can you stand a few pancakes, Miss Gill, please? Could I? At least three stacks this morning, Bertie. Okay. What time is it, Uncle Moore? About 8.30, my dear. Why? Well, I wonder if I've got time to put on another dress. Oh, I suppose so. The one you got on looks very nice. Oh, it's all right, but there's another one I'd rather wear. Well, we like the other one better. That's right, Leroy. Gosh, what's the matter with everybody this morning? We're all happy, my boy. Well, I'm going up and change. Uh, Leroy, I want you to do me a favor. Sure, Aunt. What is it? Well, uh, I wonder if you here's could... Here's your tomato juice, Miss Gill, please. Oh, thank you, Bertie. And here's your last stack, Leroy. Thanks, thou treasure. Yeah. Hmm. Whole house is crazy this morning. <laughs> Leroy, I want you to take a note to, uh, <clears throat> the uh, superintendent of your school. Okay, where is it? Oh, can you reach the syrup, Aunt? Here. I'll have to write the note. Oh, gee, you better hurry. I gotta go. I'll go in my study and write it now. And don't you go without it. Okay. Uh, let me see. Uh, my darling Eve, I can't wait to see you again. I'll be around this evening for a, another kiss. Your naughty Throckmorton. <laughs> <laughs> Where are those fancy envelopes I got for Christmas? Oh, yeah, here. Hey, Aunt, hurry up. Hey, coming. Here you are, Leroy. Now, wait till I seal it. I won't read it. You're a wonderful boy, Leroy, and I trust you completely. But this is important business. There. Okay. Now, you're to give the letter to Miss Goodwin personally. Yep. But wait till there's no one else around. Yep. And then ask her for an answer. Okay. And if everything works out, maybe you'll get a football for Thanksgiving. <laughs> Bertie. Oh, hello, Leela. Hello, Frogmorton. Guess what? I've been shopping already. I've brought you a little peace offering. Peace offering? Mm-hmm. I borrowed a pot roast from you yesterday, remember? Perfectly. Well, I do hope it didn't put you out too much. It just saved my life. But I couldn't sleep a wink till I'd returned it. So I went downtown this morning and I bought you this. Well, we'll have to see what it is. I took a chance. I do hope you like steak, South Martin. Steak? Like it? Oh, brother, look at that. Hey, Bertie, come here and look. What is Mr. Gill? Oh, my goodness. Leela, this isn't black market. Oh, of course not, silly. The butcher just likes me. Uh -oh. <laughs> Besides, I'm invited out to dinner so often I have more points than I can use. Uh, Bertie, take that right out and put it in the icebox and guard it with your life. Yes, sir, I sure will. Hide it behind the milk bottles or something. Don't you worry. Ain't nobody gonna get the hands on them. Uh. Leela, you shouldn't have done it. After all, a pot roast is only a pot roast. Oh, but I love doing things for you, Throckmorton. <laughs> oh, really? Mm -hmm. Down where I come from, we have an old saying, the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. <laughs> Very good, yeah. <laughs> Throckmorton, let's stop pretending. Pretending what? Who's pretending? You and I, we've been living a lie, Throckmorton. Well, I don't know about you. Oh, but... yes, we have, and it's all my fault. I've been a foolish, thoughtless, mixed-up little girl, and I've hurt your poor boy. No, you haven't. Yes, I have, Throckmorton. Honest? I went away and left you, and when I came back, I wasn't very nice to you. I've hurt you cruelly, and you've taken it like a gentleman. Well, I always try to be polite. <laughs> but now I've come to say I'm sorry and ask you if you can ever forgive me. Sure, I forgive you. Oh, but forgiveness is not that easy, Throckmorton. Why not? If I say I forgive you, what more do you want? Well, I've got to earn your forgiveness. Oh? Well, you brought me this steak. Let's call it even. <laughs> oh, why do we have to go on hurting each other this way? Who's hurt? I just said thanks for the steak. <laughs> You don't understand. And now listen, don't start crying. I can't stand crying. Leela, I don't know what I did, but I'm sorry. Oh, you don't understand. I'm crying because you're so sweet. Well, I won't be so sweet then. <laughs> 
Only stop crying. Well, perhaps it was all for the best, Throckmorton. Sure, sure. What was? Oh, we were too much in love. Foolishly, recklessly in love. Sure, we were crazy. Oh. <laughs> and so much too young. Well, I was 42. <laughs> Too young to know our own minds, I mean. Oh, sure. We didn't know what we were doing. Oh, perhaps it would have been a mistake for us to have married just then. Worst thing that could have happened to us. Perhaps it was Providence that stopped us at the last minute. I thought it was Beauregard. Oh. <laughs> Poor Beauregard. You'll never know what a shock it was. Having him turn up after I thought he was dead all these years. Very unsettling. And then to have him go like that after I'd got used to having him around. Here today, gone tomorrow. Yes. It was such a dreadful way to go. Kicked by mule. Well, we can't all be choosers. I made a vow that day, Throckmorton. I vowed I'd never even look at another man for three months. Yeah. <laughs> that was right. Out of respect for his memory, I thought it was the decent thing to do. You were absolutely right. Oh, you've been so understanding, Throckmorton. But you won't have to be understanding any longer because those three months were up yesterday. Uh, Leela, I want to take this opportunity to wish you very every happiness. Oh, thank you. I wouldn't admit it to his face, but you won't find a better man any place than the judge. The judge? Salt of the earth. I'd give my shirt for that old goat. Oh, but Throckmorton... Don't oh, worry about me. I'll bear up somehow. As you say, it was just one of those things. One of those things that was never meant to be. Oh, well, a man has his work. And who knows? Maybe someday, somehow, sometime, somebody. Uh, Throckmorton, are you trying to tell me you don't love me? Huh? There's, uh, there's someone else, isn't there? Huh? Um, tell me, what's she like? Well, she's the kind of... A, what's who like? She's uh, very talented, isn't she? Well... And very handsome. Well... I suppose she likes to go for long walks and discuss things. Leela, who have you been talking to? Oh, I don't blame you, Throckmorton. A woman like that with a brilliant mind full of mathematics and politics and all. That's not all. I think... <laughs> I think you'd be foolish to waste any time on me with my poor little talent. Uh, tell me, does she play the piano? Oh, yes, very well. The uh, classics, I suppose. <laughs> She plays them all. Oh, how wonderful. Think of the long evenings you'll have. Now me, all I know is silly little love songs like, speak to me of love. I can't, Leela. I'm late for something. I gotta be somewhere. Oh, Throckmorton, please. It's the last thing I'll ever ask you. No tears now, please. Eve? I mean, Leela? Oh, let me out of here. will be with us again in just a few moments. Here's an alarming fact, and one that should set all of us thinking about the importance of food as a weapon of war. Enough food is wasted annually in our American homes to feed the larger part of our armed forces at home and abroad. Now, that's one reason why all through this month of November, you'll hear a rousing challenge to make food fight for freedom. You can begin right now, today, at home, to make food fight for freedom. You can do it through better meal planning, better food storage, by using up every single scrap of leftover food. And there are other ways, too. Share and play square with food. Pledge yourself to accept no ration foods without giving up ration stamps. Pay no more than ceiling prices. The makers of parquet margarine urge you to back our government's Food Fights for Freedom program and back it for all it's worth. Remember, you can do your part if you'll follow this sound, sensible advice. Produce and conserve. Always share and play square.
Now, what of the great Gildersleeve? Well, he sought refuge in the quiet of his office at the water department. Glad for the moment to turn his mind from affairs of the heart to affairs of state. And so we find him hard at work, clearing his desk as every good executive should. Now, let's see what we got here. Uh, oh, Miss, uh, uh, you there, Bessie. There weren't any phone calls for me this morning before I came in. No, Mr. Gildersleeve, there weren't. You sure there wasn't a phone call from Miss Goodwin? No. Yes, uh, she's the principal of the school. No, nobody called at all. Uh, strange. Have you found that correspondence yet? No, Mr. Gildersleeve, I haven't. And I've looked everywhere. I just don't know where it could be. Well, we've got to find it. It's important. Have you looked in the files? The files? I'll look there. Oh, my God. <laughs> if it didn't occur to you to look there, it probably didn't occur to you to put it there either. What do you think files are for? Here, let Here, me. I'll look. Look out. Bessie, what's a pair of rubbers doing in the file? Oh, for goodness sake. My rubbers, too. I haven't seen those since last spring. What are they doing here? Well, I don't know. I just... Don't tell me you don't know. Well, you told me to put them where you'd be sure and find them. Do you think this is any place? Well, I put them under R. She put them under R. <laughs> I give up. By George, Bessie, if it weren't for the manpower shortage... Mr. Gildersleeve. If my services are not satisfactory, I could go someplace elsewhere. If you cry, you're fired. I can't help it. Oh, what is this? Oh. I'm sorry, Bessie. You never think of me as a human being. I'll admit it hadn't occurred to me. <laughs> I have feelings, too. Yes, I know, I know, Bessie. I shouldn't have spoken to you like that. I'm sorry. Here. Blow your nose. Uh, that's it. I guess I'm a little on edge today. Tell me, Bessie, have you ever known what it is to be in love? Well, you needn't blush like that. I just... Bessie, you're not in love. Oh, I... I guess I am. Well, that's fine, little Bessie. It's nothing to be ashamed of, you know. All the world loves a lover. Tell me, does he love you? Oh, this party doesn't even know I exist, even hardly. Well, maybe one of these days he'll wake up. Oh, if he knew, he'd just think it was silly. He'd just think I had a crush or something. He's an older man. Oh. So I just worship him from afar. Every morning I come in and I dust off his desk and I think... Bessie! Bessie, get busy. Do something. Find that correspondence. Take those rubbers out. I've, I've got to go out. But if you keep looking, keep looking, Bessie. I may not be back till after lunch. I may not be back at all. Gosh, what a noise. Is that you, Leroy? No, my dear, it's me. Isn't Leroy home yet? No, he isn't. Well, he should be. I've told him time and again to come straight home from school. But today's a music lesson. Oh, that darn music's a nuisance to him and everybody else. Don't tell him I said so, Marjorie. Why are you in such a tizzy about Leroy? I'm not in a... Oh, there he is, slamming the door again. Well, boys will be boys. Hi, Al. Hi, beautiful. Oh, uh, Leroy. I saw Wally Hoff in TV's drugstore just now, Marge. Leroy. Who is he with? Wouldn't you like to know? Leroy, please. What is it, Uncle? Have you got a message for me? Message? Oh, yeah, yeah. You're all set for tonight, Uncle. Well, yeah. <laughs> Who was Wally with, Leroy? Mr. Peavy. Oh, he's that. Leroy, was there any... Uh, uh, come into my study for a moment, will you? What for? I haven't done anything. I know that, my boy. You've done your uncle a great favor. There's just uh, something I'd like to ask you. Oh. If you'll excuse us, my dear. Oh, go right ahead. Now, Leroy, where? In our office. Anyone else there? I don't know. Gosh, I can't remember everything. Well, she thanked me, I guess, and then I told her I was supposed to get an answer, and, and she opened it. Fine. She said she was going to ask you over anyway. Well, Leroy, you're a splendid messenger. I'll get you that football tomorrow. Oh, gee, thanks. Uh, she said Judge Hooker's going to be there, too, to talk about the school board. What? <laughs> It'll be the briefest meeting in history. <laughs> I'm awfully glad you could come, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, so am I, Miss Goodwin. Long time no see. <laughs> you too, Judge. Thank you. Let's all sit down, shall we? Yes. Don't you want to sit over here on the couch? Thanks, Gildy. I will. <laughs> you can have it all to yourself, Judge. Now, what was the problem, Miss Goodwin? Well, Judge Hooker's going to explain the whole thing. 
Have you got your notes, Judge? Right here. Oh, my goodness. Pages and pages. Well, let's see. <clears throat> In the year 1913, the population of Summerfield was 14,967. You have to go that far back, Horace? Well, it's a necessary part of the story, Gilda. You'll see in a minute. In the year 1913, the tax rate was three mil. Three mil. In the year 1922, the tax rate had increased to six mil. Yeah. And in the year 1923, it had increased. Well, it brings us to the year 1933. In 1933, now get this, it's very interesting. In 1933, the tax rate went down one mil. You don't say. Yeah. But then in 1934, it increased again. So you can see that the situation in 1943 is not going to be so easy. Have I made myself clear? In two hours, you've made yourself clear as mud, Judge. Now, what's this all about? We need two new teachers in our school. Well, why didn't you say so? We'll get them. Nothing hard about that. Now, Gildersleeve, I'll you... explain it to the board in two minutes. Now, I move we adjourn. Oh, but, Mr. Gildersleeve, The we board have... will understand it, Eve. They're not all as dumb as Hooker. Well, I think Judge Hook has made a very brilliant analysis of the situation. Well, let's leave it to our friend Gildersleeve, Miss Goodwin. He seems to think he can put it over. Sure, I move we adjourn. All right, Gildy. Since our business is concluded, perhaps we can all discuss something pleasanter. Relax for a few minutes. Yes. Now, let me catch you relaxing, Judge. <laughs> Miss Goodwin, did I ever tell you about the case I tried involving a man with three wives? That's too many for tonight, Horace. Dr. Pettibone told you to be in bed every night by 10 o'clock. Oh, I'm sure the judge could stay a little longer. Why, Eve? The judge has been very kind to come over this evening. Well, I just don't want him to overdo. You've got to be fresh for the board meeting tomorrow afternoon, Judge. Yeah, that's true. And it is 10.30. Maybe I'd better be running along. Well, if you must, Horace. Now, don't rush me too fast or I'll get stubborn. Yeah. <laughs> Judge, uh, there is something I want to discuss with Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, that's more like it. <laughs> I'm afraid I must go. Good night, gracious lady. Good night, and thank you again. Let me see you to the ju to the door, Jack. Very kind of you, I'm sure, Gildersleeve. <laughs> now get out of here, you old goat. What'd you say? Uh, good night, Judge. Good night. <laughs> now, well, Eve, here we are. Alone, aren't we? Yes, Doc Morton. How about a little kiss? No. No, please don't. Eve. What's the matter? I never should have let you kiss me last night, Doc Morton. It was all a dreadful mistake. No, it wasn't. Eve, what have I done? Nothing. It, it isn't anything like that. Well, then what is it? Doc Morton, when you kissed me last night... It didn't mean anything to you. Oh, yes, it did. It. <laughs> All right. Just what did it mean? Lots of things. Let me kiss you again, and I'll show you. <laughs> no, Throckmorton. I want you to pretend last night was just a dream. A dream that never happened. But, but Eve, why? Well, I believe... That when a woman loves, it should be for an important reason. I believe that love should be a splendid, glowing, exciting adventure. What do you think? Sounds good to me. <laughs> well, we've got to start all over again, Throckmorton. Uh, now? No. <laughs> we, we mustn't even think about such things anymore. Oh, my goodness. We must build a beautiful relationship of the spirit, like Eloise and Abelard, like Dante and Beatrice. Like all the great lovers of history, we must become worthy of each other. Please try to understand. Well, I am trying, but it's pretty tough, Eve. Don't you like me? Yes, very much. Well, then... I want it to be more than that. I want you to be a man I'd follow to the ends of the earth. I want you to be a hero. Eve, I'm too old to join the Marines. <laughs> Well, there are other ways of being a hero. I want you to think about them. But Eve... Please go now. But do think about what I've said, Throckmorton. And then, perhaps in a month or so, 
Come and see me. See, a month. Eve. Good night, Rock Morton. Good night, Eve. Couldn't I just have one little... <laughs> Heloise and Abelard. Why the devil did I ever get mixed up with a school teacher? <laughs> with him. How many times does a fella have to get burnt before he learns? Just born to be made a fool of, I guess. Well, I give up. Well, I see PB still open. Oh, hello, Mr. Gillespie. Just closing up here. Well, don't let me stop you. Uh, something I can do for you? No, no, I just dropped in. I'll walk along with you if you're going home. Yeah, I'll be right with you. I've just got one or two things to send you here. Take your time, Peavy. You seem to be a little down in the mouth this evening, Mr. Gillespie. Well, maybe I am, Peavy. Maybe I am. No uh, bad news, I hope. Well, not exactly bad news, no. But when a woman tells you one thing one minute and another the next, I don't know. Yeah, that's what makes them women, Mr. Gillespie. <laughs> I thought this one was different. But I guess they're all alike, Peavy. Good and bad, rich or poor, they're all alike. Well, I couldn't say that. <laughs> well, they are. Where there's a woman concerned, there's no peace. You never know where you stand. Well, I couldn't say that either. <laughs> now, with uh, Mrs. Peavy, I... well, I guess it's like the poet says, Mr. Gildersleeve, it takes a heap of living. Man and woman have got to live together for years and years before they really understand one another. But when they do, it's it kind of peaceful, kind of nice. Uh, I guess you're right, Peavy. Now, Mrs. Peavy and I have been married for over 23 years. And in all that time, I don't think she's ever once... Oh, excuse me. Peavy's pharmacy. Oh, hello, dear. Yeah, I was just... just... Well, I was just... Yes, dear. Yes, dear. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I, I was just... I, well, good gracious to Betsy, woman. I was just... Uh, no, fiddle. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Peavy. Good night, everybody. Ken Carpenter speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company, inviting you to listen again next week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Ladies, a quick solution to the main dish puzzle, especially for those times when the stamps are running low. For one single ration point, get two packages of Kraft Dinner, the product that gives you grand macaroni and cheese in just seven minutes cooking time. There are two dinner main dishes for a family of four. A bargain in points, you bet. But wait till you taste this quick-made macaroni and cheese. The macaroni in each Kraft dinner package cooks fluffy tender in just seven minutes. The Kraft grated in each package lets you put the tangy cheese flavor through and through the macaroni in a twinkling. Whisk the hot Kraft dinner into a dish, and you're all set. Or mold the Kraft dinner into a ring or tin barrels and serve it with creamed vegetables, fish, or a small amount of meat. Now do you see why so many women say Kraft dinner is tops as a help with wartime meals? Get some soon. Kraft Dinner for swell macaroni and cheese in a hurry. This program came to you from Hollywood. This is the National.